Cleveland Browns have been hitting the ground running uh, with a new search for the defensive coordinator. Jim Schwartz, the first guy in. Uh, we'll talk a little bit in the first segment about Jim Schwartz, his background, uh, and, and get into that a little bit more. Second uh, segment, we'll definitely talk about what it is that uh, he, he brings to the table a little deeper. Uh, defensive line play, stopping the run, uh, trying to get pressure with four guys up front. We'll talk about his forte, what he brings to the table and his schematics. Third segment, what does it mean that the Cleveland Browns are bringing the first two candidates in that have head coaching experience? How does that fold into what we want to look forward to next year? And is that something that that, that is by choice by the Browns in case the season does not kick off to a good start. We'll talk about that and much, much more on this episode of the Locked On Browns podcast. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on ELOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. How's everybody doing? Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush at Jeff underscore LJ at underscore Lloyd, Mr. G Bush at G Bush 91, the ultimate Cleveland sports show, radio personality 92.3, the fan, uh, you name it, there's something being covered sports-wise in Cleveland. G. Bush is there, and never a man to step away from any type of spicy take. Uh, today, the Cleveland Browns have defense coordinator Jim Schwartz in the house. We're going to get a little bit of the history of Jim Schwartz. Uh, second segment, we're going to talk about you know what Jim Schwartz has succeeded with in the past, and it's kind of interesting because it's two of the biggest glaring issues with the Cleveland Browns defense in the 2022 season. And the third segment, like G said, uh, does it mean anything that the first two defensive coordinator interviews are, as of what we know now, the only two guys who have past head coaching experience? Today's episode of Lockdown Browns is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. As we said, Jim Schwartz up first in Berea today. Jim Schwartz started years and years ago with the Bill Belichick era in Cleveland. Um, really where he made his hay, uh, kind of went from you know, behind the scenes, scouting coordinator, tape guy, uh, to becoming a defensive assistant with the Tennessee t Titans. Following season, went to linebacker coach. Season after that, promoted to defensive coordinator. Had a nice run with Tennessee, which led to a head coaching opportunity with the Detroit Lions. Um, most like everybody else who's going to be a head coach in Detroit. Did not go so well. Uh, after that, stint with the Buffalo Bills as their defensive coordinator. When Rex Ryan took over the head coaching job for the Buffalo Bills, um, it was kind of obvious for Jim Schwartz with Rex and his defensive mind coming in that, you know, Jim was not going to be needed. Uh, made his way out of the game for a little bit. One year later, came back to the Philadelphia Eagles, transformed that defense. I believe it was 30 and 28 in yards allowed and points allowed his first season. He took those numbers down to 13th in the league, 12th in the league. Uh, uh, with the changes in Philadelphia over the last couple of years, you know, Jim was out of the game once again this year, a basically a defensive you know, mastermind, so to speak with the Tennessee Titans. And at 54 years old here, maybe, you know, one last run here as a defensive coordinator or wherever this leads. Um, the thing with Jim, and we're going to get to this a little bit deeper in the second segment is it's always been about defensive line play for Jim Schwartz. And I know G is going to get to something because this is kind of where Schwartz and Flores are kind of almost polar opposites. Um, but everywhere he's been, it's always been cases of dominant defensive line play. Albert Hainsworth in Tennessee, and Dominican Sue in Detroit, Buffalo, Marcel Darius, former number one over, overall selection. Mario Williams had a fantastic year with him out there as well. Obviously, the Eagles, you know, Fletcher 
Dr. Cox, fantastic. Now kind of getting that same type of thing in Tennessee from a guy named Justin Simmons, who's just an absolute terror within this league. So Jim Schwartz comes in here, and it is a, a strong, strong candidate. There's no no way around it. And I think part of with, with Jim Schwartz, and there are so many people who speak well of him, and Albert Hainsworth has always been a guy who had his issues. But Albert Hainsworth, this is basically the one guy that Albert Hainsworth, you want real football talk. You want his opinion on how you know the game should be played, how defense should be coached. Albert Hainsworth, you can find millions of quotes from Albert Hainsworth talking about Jim Schwartz. Um, so it's interesting. Like I said, we're going to get to this a little bit more in, in the second segment here because also the question would be is, do you bring in Jim Schwartz and say, look, look, what has always worked for you? We need a lot of work with. So basically, are we letting you maybe choose the ingredients here of what will be your brand on this defense? Yeah, Jim Schwartz brings a couple of things that I really like to the table. He brings the fact that he's a head head coach experience. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, in our third segment uh, also what he does best is you know in the second segment we'll break that down a little bit uh, as well is he does a great job of stopping the run you look at 2018 when he played for a uh, coach for the eagles they they were a, a team that he came in and transformed obviously we talked about the titans up in the titans 2014 um he's had two different two different defenses that have been top defenses in 14 and 18 and he does it does it with um, a lot of different w- ways than other coaches do it. He usually is a, a guy that's seven in, in coverage. He likes you know he likes to have his defensive line take you know hold and be able to stop the run. He believes in. They have a, a practice where where it goes. Hey, listen, you're gonna read run on the way to the quarterback, right? <laughs> you're reading run on the way to the quarterback. It's all about penetration. It's not about sitting up to the line of scrimmage, holding people up. They want penetration in gaps. They want guys upfield. And if you get a penetration destroys the run game as well as it does when you talk about rushing the passer. So he's going to try to do a lot of that with your defensive line. He's a guy who, uh, you know, Callahan is one of those individuals who works his, his magic with the offensive line. He is the defensive version of that. Uh, what he's been able to do in order to stop the run with just bringing four people or, or playing some of the base fronts up front. Um, I do like the fact that 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 he's a bur- person that has experience in a lot of different si- si- uh, situations. He's coached with a lot of different players. He's seen a variety of skill sets. So, you know, sometimes when you get a, a defensive coordinator, he may not have the experience level to say, I had a player like this in the, in uh, Tennessee, or I had a player like this uh, in Philadelphia. So I know how to get the most out of this player. I know what skill set that player could be really, you know, re- really accentuated and show what he can really do by like really shining a light on those players. And since he's had so many players and he says he's been such a respected person in the league, this is the type of in- individual that you look for for stability. You look for the, that you're going to be able to li- line up to say you the way you say you are. Have no mis- mistakes. It just be very fundamentally mentally sound. So you know another good person to hire. Um, I like the mix so far. You got some upstarts. You got some guys that have been k- k- coaches before. You got some lifelong de- defensive coordinators, and you got some young guys that got some exciting ideas. I like the mix so far, Jeff. Uh, and uh, we'll just we'll see what it is that Kevin Stefanski and the Browns are looking to do. Do they want the complete overhaul, which is a Flores move, or do they want to kind of stay the same and try to f- fix up for some of the fundamentals? And it, not to you know be remiss here to bring this up. Obviously, Andrew Barry in his one season in 2019, when he left the Browns, went to the Philadelphia Eagles before he came back to be your general manager. Jim Schwartz was there, so obviously this is something someone Andrew Barry is comfortable with. Andrew Barry knows well, um, you know, even if it was one season together, you know, you find yourself on common ground as far as maybe some things, which made this a very easy, easy call for Andrew Barry to make, you know, to someone that he has worked with in the past, you know, and basically looks at his defense and says, all right, well, I see this is the issue. I see this is an issue. I see this is an issue. I've known Jim. Jim is a rallier of men. When, you know, when you're talking about potentially becoming a fourth time defensive coordinator, you know what you're doing. You were obviously very good at your gig. And for most of these, they were a decent amount of time with each job. You know, so it, it wasn't just like bing, bang, bong, fire, this, that, and the other thing. And there really was never an instance where Jim Schwartz was moved on from, other than being a head coach, from his defense coordinator gigs because he was a problem. You know, Tennessee, 
he went to become head coach of the Detroit Lions. With his time in Buffalo, he was leaving what was a good defense, but they hired a defensive-minded head coach in Rex Ryan, which obviously was going to probably be an issue there. You know, Philadelphia got him to the apex, won a Super Bowl, and that's something, look, there's not a lot of those in that room in, in Berea. There's not a lot in the building. There's not a lot within the locker room. Um, so to actually have somebody that has the credence that says, yes, I've been there and I've won it, does bring a lot to it. Uh, we're going to switch it up here. We are going to get to uh, Jim Schwartz and you know basically his philosophies and it's what has worked for him as a defensive coordinator. And it seems to be a little bit of a big, big issue uh, with what the 2022 Cleveland Browns defense was. Your latest lockdown Browns, Jeff Lloyd and Garrett Bush. Go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stresses of taxes and file for you so you can do not taxes. Show your eyes to things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset. With TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish. Ensuring your taxes are done right, guaranteed. So you can relax. Feels good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Intuit TurboTax, full service products only. Video meeting while expert does your taxes required. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. G and I are freaking out about our new sponsor, Ultimate Football GM. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM? and managing your favorite football franchise, well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You are responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, and all the ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want want you know with each season just like in the nfl just with any football team you got changes to make players get older contracts expire the draft exists free agency exists you've got an owner to answer to and he wants the best product on the field each and every week locked on browns listeners get a 100 free boost to the franchise when using the promo code locked on all caps in the game store that's locked on in all caps so make sure to check it out today to download the game just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. We're back at it. to Locked on Browns podcast at GBush91 is where you can find me. At Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lord is where you can find Jeff. Make sure you follow Locked on the Browns at Locked on Browns uh, on Twitter. And continue, continue to continue um, to support us on uh, YouTube. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you always know when we're about to drop our videos and continue to make uh, the, uh, you know, Locked on Browns podcast your first listen of each and every day. Um, Jim Schwartz in town. And uh, the great thing about, you know, the season is you could try to put some of this stuff behind you and at least there are some changes going to be made. And, and one of the areas that we thought where it was a prerequisite or, or something that was good, uh, uh, you know, uh, a foregone conclusion is that Joe Woods would not be here as the defensive coordinator. Jim Schwartz is the first person in. Um, you know, with Jim Schwartz, there's one thing that he does well. He's always done well at uh, defensive line play. He's always done well at developing defensive tackles, developing defensive ends, and those individuals are able to stop the run and get after the pass a little bit. And the, the uh, you know, they have had Fletcher Cox, who was a monster. Um, they've, they've had the ability to kind of, you know, get the best out of defensive lines. Um, and, you know, Simmons in, in, in Tennessee, they seem to be able to get the best out of those players, and those players seem to be very productive. And that just coincides with the Browns struggle with the most. Um, you know, teams ran all over the Browns last year, whether it was in the run game or whether it was in the pass game earlier when it was uh, carving us up because of bad plays or missed assignments, so to speak. So as the season wore down, there was there was some um, – Improving by the defense, not enough to justify keeping Joe Woods on. So if you do hire Schwartz, you kill two birds with one stone. You you do get an opportunity to have a, a guy who has some experience, 
You do have an opportunity to get a guy who's had some really good track record in this league before. And plus, he probably, he, as, a, as a veteran coach, he knows how to work with all different players. So he's the level-headed guy. He's the guy that, you know, makes sense if you want to marry the two personality-wise. I'm sure he knew the call was coming. Um, you know, and you have your agent doing the due diligence and a, here's what we like, here's what appeals to us maybe about this Cleveland Browns defense. Obviously, Miles Garrett speaks for itself. Uh, you get to play with a dynamic player on a Hall of Fame trajectory as your top player, as your top pass rusher. You look, you have three decent corners. It gives you flexibility. Um, everybody's could probably going to be able to do a little bit of everything. You know, I don't think they're ever going to pigeon Greg Newsom to the slot like everybody thinks. Uh, they can all play outside. They're all going to find a way to play inside. You got a diverse skill set. You know, Denzel Ward, you know, kind of likes to, you know, lay off a little in coverage. Maybe set himself to up opportunities to make plays on the ball. Uh, Martin Emerson, just kind of a bully out there, likes to play physical, likes to play handy. Greg Newsom, a little combination of everything. You look at that, that appeals to you. Grant Delp, it appeals to you. But the thing, and this is where it does get interesting, is what has always been maybe essentially the calling card for a Jim Schwartz defense and whether or not it was successful. He was having great interior defensive line play that stuffed the run and put him in a position, uh, second and long, third and long, cover seven, rush with four. It's it's given that opportunity. And this is what may be appealing. As we all understand, the Browns are going to have to do a ton, a ton of work as far as what they're going to put together on the defensive line. Look, we know Miles Garrett's going to be here. Obviously, Alex Wright's most likely going to be here. After that, maybe Isaiah Thomas is still going to be here. Winovich is a free agent. Taven Bryan's a free agent. Jordan Elliott has not done enough yet to believe, you know, that he is a lock for 2023. Tommy Togiai, same thing. Perry on Winfrey, you think probably has a real good shot of being part of this 2023. So you're talking about adding five to six players on that defensive line. And Jim Schwartz, if he takes it, has the opportunity to be involved in that. It has an opportunity to bring in people that he likes. And look, we're talking about a guy who still has players in this league. Uh, the Tennessee Titans this year had Demarcus, Demarcus Walker. He was their third, fourth DN, seven total sacks. In you know, This is a guy that would excel here. Um, built more like a defensive end, can get some interior reps. So for Jim Schwartz, he's not coming in and basically having to play with the defensive line that's already intact that maybe or maybe not does not coincide with his strengths. He's going to have a big hand in this if he chooses to and assembling the defensive line that he wants. And I think with the talent that is there and the opportunity to kind of handpick his guys for what is the most important aspect of his defense is what makes this appealing to him. And I think the fact, and we'll get to this in segment three, the fact that they are bringing in a former head coach to coach the defense there will be no more of you know these issues, leadership, whatever questions anybody else wants to bring up. I think Jim Schwartz will come in here, and Jim Schwartz will you know be able to get this done. This is a nice pairing between the two, and the Browns have a lot of solid options. There's no doubt about that, Jake. Yeah, um, you know it's just all about preference. One of the things that I will say is is you know everybody has been talking about it, and I think this is you can't skim over this. Is the Browns need to get nastier. The Browns have to be have a, a, a different demeanor. Um, you know, this year has proved to a lot of people that you can't just continue to go out, play games, and act like you're just going to overtake somebody. People were commenting like, yeah, you guys don't seem like you got that sense of urgency. Like you're not hurt by the fact that you're not going to the playoffs. And when you do get there in the playoffs, there's no guarantee you're going to win there either. You have to string together stuff successfully and consistently um, for you to be able to hit certain targets. And right. Jim, Jim Schwartz, believe it or not, has a name. We'll see if he got the same type of stuff that he want to follow up with. But, yeah, he 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 is a really solid choice going into the first interview. And it's, it, it's really encouraging because, for once, we got a, 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 a wide variety of names we understand and know. And, and maybe Stefanski can concentrate on the offense and let Jim Schwartz be the, the CEO or the, the, the leader of the defense. And most importantly, G, maybe the kindergarten teacher who's going to keep everybody in line and keep the BS out. And <laughs> whatever your role is, is what your role is. You want to talk about it on Monday, come see me in my office. We're not going to do this 30 seconds before we're about to kick off an NFL game. Jeff Lloyd, 
Garrett Bush. There is one intriguing aspect to these first two defensive coordinator interviews. Could it mean something? Maybe. Not positive, but it was certainly my first thought when we got the timeline of the interviews of the def- at, for the defense coordinator position. Jeff Lloyd, G. Bush, your latest lockdown Browns. Guys, we got six games this weekend. You got two Saturday, three Sunday, one on Monday. And one of the best things for me with a weekend like this is prize picks. Putting together and making daily fantasy easier. You pick two to five players, and if they will go score more or less than the prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections in any sport that you watch. NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, NASCAR if you wanted, disc, golf. When you name it, they have it. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. You deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Well, Jeff, we talked about uh, what it exactly is that Schwartz brings to the table. We talked about some of the pros, some of the cons. Um, and let's get into the elephant in the room. Um, one of the things that we've talked about in a lot of these, uh, with the, a lot of these coaches searches is, you know, when you get, when you have a coach who I think Kevin Stefanski falls into this, is a coach that has to have a year, a really good year, or he's not going to be here anymore. Um, he has to bring in the best available individual possible to help him, you know, turn the TV, uh, this team around, especially defensively. So what, what some people are saying is, hey, you know, if you're going to do uh, a, a defensive coordinator, why not do a defensive coordinator that got a little bit of a, a cachet, a little bit of a name and has also head coaching experience? Because the thought process is if Kevin Spancy does not perform up to, very well for the first six games, maybe four games, maybe eight games, depending on how, you know, how how disappointed Jimmy and D has Lamar in the performance. You will already have on staff an individual in the case of a Flores or a Schwartz that has guaranteed uh, bona fide head coaching experience. They've led men before. They, they, they have the ability to then step into that role and not look back. Now it gives yourself an opportunity to say, okay, we have Flores in place. We can sign him or Schwartz in place. We can sign him as a, you know, replacement for Stefanski. And then that way you don't have to learn a whole new, completely different uh, system. You don't have to, you know, change from a 4-3 to a 3-4, depending on who the coach is. You don't have to change your philosophy in the way you go about scouting players. So at least if you can keep that, you know, consistent, that is the reason why, um, you know, it could be something that's doubly advantageous of them to bring in guys with head coaching experience. Your thoughts? Who knows if they planned it this way or not, or it was just the way availability worked for these guys. Um, but first two guys that come in the door that interview for the defense coordinator job with Jim Schwartz, with Brian Flores. These are the guys that we know of who are getting interviews. And keep in mind, Vic Fangio is out there, obviously, as well. We don't know. He's a free agent. We don't have to know. But it did seem to me that the first two interviews are with guys who have head coach experience. Both are strong leaders, no question about it. What Brian Flores did with the Miami Dolphins, a team when he took over that was absolutely devoid of talent, an impressive job. A job. These the, the team went out each and every week, fought like hell. Uh, Jim Schwartz, it's been successful everywhere he's went. Obviously, his head coaching uh, stint in Detroit did not go nearly as well as Brian Flores' did down in Miami. But it also kind of, you know, is it Coach Stefanski saying, look, I can't, I don't necessarily have the time to devote to assist on the defensive side of the ball. As we know, the Browns have an offense coordinator, but the offense side of the ball is Coach Stefanski's. He's also the play caller. So in order for him, and as we talked about yesterday, him and Deshaun working together with Alex Van Pelt to find what is the absolute perfect blend of an offensive system for Deshaun and Kevin's philosophies. We don't have a ton of time for coach Stefanski to be spending, worrying about the defense. So a number one, you bring in two men right away for interviews who have head coaching experience. 
they've been with these same types of issues. And now it's, all right, well, yes, I'm a guy who knows how to be a head coach, but I only have to worry about my side of the ball, vice versa. It makes life easier for Coach Stefanski. These guys just have stronger, and I'm not knocking Coach Stefanski, and we truly don't know, but obviously there have been locker room issues somehow, some way. A guy like Brian Flores, a guy like Jim Schwartz, they can come in and they can put those things to rest. They can end those issues and end them quickly. I do believe in my gut feeling it is one of these two guys. If you read what everybody's writing as far as who they think is going to be the next defensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns, Gerard Mayo's name is mentioned, but it seems it's buzzing. It's buzzing a little bit, but he's not. It's either Brian Flores. It's, it's either Jim Schwartz or it's Brian Flores. Albert Breer. It has Brian Flores. Others have Jim Schwartz. Um, you know, don't expect any issues during the interview process. Um, you know, the Rooney rule will be satisfied tomorrow when Brian Flores comes in. So that will be taken care of. Um, the Browns have done their due diligence. And obviously, this was something. And even still, now keep in mind with this, obviously, everybody's like, well, why didn't they just move on from Joe Woods earlier? You don't see any other name on the Browns defensive assistance list getting an opportunity to be interviewed, right? So the point was, at least Joe can somewhat do the job. We're pretty confident these guys can't because we're not even going to give them an opportunity to interview for the job. So it's definitely interesting that the first two you brought in are the guys with the head coaching experience. Look, coach needs help. And, you know, it's not like Coach DeFancy is going to sit out there in front of the media and say it. But, yeah, he could use help. You know what else he could I mean, he, he could use a goon. Like, hey, you got to go lean on these dudes. What You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Know, you, see, it's, it's just not everything is in with everybody's personality. And that could be a little bit of an issue of what the Cleveland Browns have, you know, really good players, really intelligent people, coaching staff, the same, but you know, there's always one in a locker room and you may get your butt shoot out. You may get sent to run laps and you didn't do nothing. And why, why did it happen? Because said certain coach said, Need to change things up here today. This ain't going the way we need it to be going. So guess what? I'm going to light a fire under a you know, couple of cans. And there we go. Everybody's going to be tuned in, dialed in the way we need to be because it's Thursday and we got a major game on Sunday. So that's the first thing you get with these two guys in the interviews there. And again, I, I don't believe it's going to be anybody else. I think, you know, every, you know the people they said they will interview, they will. If Jim Schwartz wants this job or Brian Flores wants this job, it's going to be one of the two. I, I I don't feel any different. And I think it's mostly because of the fact that Coach can, Stavansky can go basically put himself on the line, get this offense right. And like we said, it could be four games. It could be five games. could be eight games. And where the Browns record is next year at this time will determine if maybe the new defensive coordinator gets a bump up or, you know what, the offense is right. The defense is right, and the Browns look like legitimate and contenders in 2023, which is what they should be, Jay. Yeah, that, that's where they want to be. And by any means necessary, if you want to get Jim Schwartz, if you want to get whoever it is, make sure it's the right person. And, and I preferably would like to see more enthusiasm and more talent, more rah-rah guys, so to speak, more guys that are out there putting their body on the line in order, especially when I'm looking for my defensive coordinator. Your quarterback can't be over the top emotional. We see the way that happened with Baker. It's not conducive to you throwing the football well and playing against defense that confuse you. So, you know, when you look at this situation, this this is, um, you know, a, a really good list of candidates so far, the two we've heard about, and the three or four that are in the mix, so to speak, on the outside looking in. All of them are really good candidates. We just have to wait and see and, 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 and play our position and our role to figure out who's going to be a contributor on this team, who's going to be a one that's going to really help us, and who's kind of like some some people that's kind of like, mm, duds, we might need to get them up out of here. And the best way to do that is to have somebody who's evaluated people before and understand how to go from worst to first. No question. And look, I mean, you've got to come in and make a tremendous defense. I mean, difference, rather. You know, and you're going to get some say in your horses here. Um, you've got What you have here is good. You know, just as much as we say defensive line would be huge, you know, for Jim Schwartz, a guy like Jeremiah Usukoromoa would probably be a huge, huge player for a guy and appeal to a guy like Brian Flores. We'll get to Brian Flores tomorrow as he comes to Berea for his meetings with the team. But here we got to Jim Schwartz, his history within the league, his stops along the way, all of which have been successful and all of which 
he left on good terms, which is an important thing in this business. You've had this many stops, but yet you've always left on good terms. I mean, he's back with Tennessee where it all started for him, essentially. So it shows you the type of gentleman that you're talking about. Uh, we've week, got to. Yeah, I, know, think is, a, I think there's a really big point before we let you go. The, the, the really big point is he, he had left on good terms. We got another guy we, we uh, are going to talk about. Didn't leave on such good terms with Brian Flores. That has to be brought up, and that has to we have to examine that because you know it's one thing to be a candidate; it's one thing to get the job, Jeff. <laughs> very, very, very good point. Uh, we also got to hear there is an appealing aspect for Jim Schwartz here, and a guy who's always been so solid with defensive line play is looks like he's going to get to put together or create a defensive line. And you know, is there much merit to be put to the fact that the first two defense coordinator interviews were given? to the guys that we know of at least who are interviewing with the Browns who have NFL head coaching experience. So we got to a ton here today. Tomorrow to be Brian Flores, and we'll you know extrapolate on that a little bit. You know, if we hear anything, you know, it basically what you're going to hear is the Browns and Jim Schwartz have conducted their interview for today. That's what we're going to get. So don't take anything from it. And anybody who says they got anything, no, they don't. Uh, Brian Liar, Flores. You don't tomorrow. have anything yet. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we appreciate you all for being here today. Everybody makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day. Whether it's your favorite podcast platform, of course, here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the show. Make sure you get your notifications on so when content drops, you guys are there to absorb it. Uh, throw some likes on those episodes. Also, if you have Roku, search Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will find the Locked On Browns podcast, Locked On Cavaliers, Locked On Guardians, G and all the crew over at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And make sure you're following at G Bush 91 all his work at UCSS, and, of course, uh, the radio time over at 92.3 The Fan, Saturday mornings, always other opportunities to catch G over there as well with the barbershop at G Bush 91 Myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. The show at Lockdown Browns. Follow back account. Again, we got lots of cover here. Um, we'll continue to give you the best of our abilities, all the takes, as the Browns are on a search here for a defense coordinator. And my guess is the Browns probably want to get this handled because they want to start setting up how they're going to handle the Shrine Bowl, the Senior Bowl, who's going where, who's looking at players here. And yeah, they want to be ready. They want that to be satisfied by the time these all-star circuits start because they got a lot of work to do. they got a lot of talent to find on the defensive side of the ball. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LLB. Let's go Browns.